Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church in downtown Grand Rapids. Wherever you are this day, thank you for being with us in this historic place where we have gathered today to offer God thanks and praise and to begin our Advent journey. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity, and blessed be God's reign now and forever. Amen. Advent is a season of waiting and preparation to celebrate the coming of our Savior and the promised salvation for God's people. This time of waiting is also a time for us to work for peace and justice. It is a time for us to consider our priorities as we walk in the light that God gives us. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. Holy and mighty redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Holy immortal one, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Govern and direct your holy church, especially here at St. Mark's. Fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted. Strengthen the first responders and medical professionals across the world. Hear us, O Christ. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Hear us, O Christ. Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, O Christ. Provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Hear us, O Christ. Guard and protect all children who are in danger. Hear us, O Christ. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Hear us, O Christ. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, O Christ. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins and negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. And may God forgive our sins, those things we have done, and those things we have left undone. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe. You sent your Son to be the light of the world and to spread his light of love to all. Bless this wreath and candles made by human hands. May increasing light be assigned to us of the approaching nearness of your Son, that we might prepare in joy for Christ coming among us and be ready to receive him at his coming again in glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today, as we light the first Advent candle, we are reminded that the flickering of the flame reminds us that our waiting is a time of both contemplation and action. Let us pray together. Dear God, through your spirit you spoke to the prophets, and the people prayed and waited for a Messiah to come. Through your spirit speak to each of us that we may feel your presence and know your will in our Advent waiting. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. 
Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us now meditate on the psalm as it is sung by our cantor. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading jo Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the Son of Man you have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you will be called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert, for you know not when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of Christ. Glory Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and redeemer. Amen. I wanted to begin this morning by sharing with you what I determined was God's handiwork in creation. So, through the miracle of technology, let's begin with visual images through the marvel of that technology. Last Sunday afternoon, I sat eating a burger in my car and spied beautiful images of nature across 28th Street in Cascade. The images which I saw from the parking lot were of beautiful and multicolored vines reaching from the ground up concrete walls of AK Ricks, a store into which I have never been. As soon as I finished my delicious burger, I drove across the street to take pictures, and then I did post them on Facebook as well. Why, you might ask. While sitting in my car, eating, and also listening to Mahler's first symphony, I realized that during this year of a raging and life-changing pandemic, God's handiwork in creation is life-giving. The vines growing on the facade of a building in Cascade were a reminder to smell the roses, as some say, and to appreciate the little gifts all around us, especially in nature. Recognizing God's handiwork in creation would probably not be at the top of many people's list today. Thursday. Thursday was a Thanksgiving like none before. Muted, subdued, even sad for many people, unable to gather together, finding room for thanks and gratitude may have been difficult. Following the live stream Thanksgiving Day service here at St. Mark's, I called a number of parishioners and stopped by to see a couple of them while remaining distanced outside. While I wanted to reach out to a few parishioners to wish them a happy Thanksgiving, I recognized that not everyone would be well fed on Thanksgiving and many would go hungry. 
visual images of tremendously long lines of cars awaiting food in many places in our nation are deeply troubling. For millions of Americans, food insecurity, a phrase which seems to soften the blow of not having enough food to eat, is widespread throughout the country. I recalled having paused early on Thanksgiving morning to offer a little prayer of thanks to God for the roof over my head, food in my refrigerator, a car with gas in it, for employment, and for family and friends scattered across the nation. Life together this year has been simply different than in the past, and there is marked sadness. This past week, I mourned the over 265,000 in our nation alone who have died from the pandemic. I mourn the passing of a number of parishioners over this past year. I mourn the passing of 14-year-old Honesty Hodges, who first came to our attention as a young girl handcuffed by police two years ago. Honesty died of the coronavirus last week. I mourned Patrick Quinn, the founder of the Ice Bucket Challenge, who helped raise millions of dollars for ALS. Patrick died from ALS last week. I mourned not being able to physically gather here as church while believing in my heart that even in that sadness and lament, God's work is at work. That same work, that grace, calls us to a deeper awareness of who God is. As we lament, God laments with us. How can we feel God's presence in the sadness of life, those times of lament when we need God so much to be with us? We need God to be companion and friend, to hold us tight through the struggles of life and to hold us up when we are unable to stand on our own. Today's gospel passage challenges us with a kind of daunting, if not alarming, text. We are to stay awake, to keep watch, and to be prepared for the future. Mark clearly tells us, but about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, midnight, cockcrow, or dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. These words call us to do all we can each and every day to be all God calls us to be with a kind of immediacy which responds to God's call to action. Today we have begun a new liturgical year with the season of Advent. Advent is a season of hope, and we are challenged, perhaps like never before, to be people of hope. We are challenged to live life with hope and expectation that God in Jesus will be with us no matter the struggles which come our way. Can we invite God into those struggles and live into the beloved community to which we are called? As church at St. Mark's, we're working to be the mission of God here and for those whom we serve, our parishioners, those who come on Saturday mornings for hot coffee and food, those who join us, you, virtually, in five offerings of prayer during the week, those we support through our commitment to Degage Ministries, Heartside, Kids Food Basket, Mel Trotter, Guiding Light, Casa, Dwelling Place, Safe Haven, God's Kitchen, Access West Michigan, and other organizations serving those in need. A couple of weeks ago, 
we created a prayer fence at the St. Mary's Garden and watch as more and more small prayers on cloth get attached. The prayer fence marked with Tibetan prayer flags is a sign of hope and a demonstration that we rely on God as we reach beyond the walls of this place to try and make a difference. This Advent, can we commit to pray as many days a week as possible for our needs and the needs of our nation and the world? Can we pray for an end to the pandemic, healing for those who are sick, comfort for those who are dying and those who mourn them? Can we pray for the needs of the homeless and those without food, an end to racism, violence, and war? Our world has so many needs, and we believe that prayer and our actions can make a difference. Isaiah reminds us, O Lord, you are our father, and we are the clay, and you are our potter, for we all are the work of your hand. As Christians, let us commit to being the work of God's hand, God's handiwork in action. We believe that Jesus offers us the way, the truth, and the life. We believe in him and in one another, in science and scientists producing vaccines. And with God's help, the year ahead will be better for us all. Amen. Let us pray together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, the Spirit is worshipped and glorified. The Spirit has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During this season of Advent, we ask God to hear our prayers. For St. Mark's, the Vestry, all those in parish leadership, and all that we do to offer ourselves and all we have to bring about the reign of God. We pray, O oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. For the president, the governor, the mayor, the president-elect and vice president-elect, and all elected officials, for peace throughout our nation and the world, for the unemployed and the underemployed, for the end to racism, violence, and war. We pray. Oh, oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. For Archbishop Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, the Right Reverend Wayne Hoagland, Dana, his wife, and their family, and all who give of themselves for the sake of the gospel. 
we pray, O oh oh God, God, hear us. us. For Mother Earth and our individual and collective responses to change in the climate, and for all those suffering from natural disasters in our land and throughout the world, we pray, O oh oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. For our stewardship season, faith-filled generosity, as we give of our gifts for the mission of St. Mark's in 2021. May we give in thanks for the many blessings in our lives of faith at St. Mark's. We pray, O oh God, oh God, hear, hear us. us. For the sick, especially remembering those on our parish prayer list found in today's bulletin, those suffering due to the coronavirus, and all those for whom we have promised to pray. We pray, O oh God, oh God, hear, hear us. us. For those who have died, we especially remember Honesty Hodges and Patrick Quinn. May all the departed rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon them. We pray, O oh God, oh God, hear, hear us. us. For what else or whom else shall we pray this day? O oh God, hear these prayers, which we have named aloud, and those which lie deep within our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. O oh oh God, God, hear, hear us. us. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Let us acknowledge that peace in one another. Thank you again for being with us today as we have now begun our Advent journey. Please know that you are always welcome to be with us, certainly on Sundays, as well as at prayer on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays as well. A special thanks to the Armour family, Mike, Anne, and their, and their family uh, for this beautiful Advent wreath, which begins our journey and as we will light an, an, an additional candle uh, throughout this coming week. We have many, many things going on at St. Mark's, and so please take a look at your e-news, if you will. Um, and uh, if you're not getting e-news and would, and would like to receive e-news, please contact us here at St. Mark's, and we will be happy to add you to our um, e uh, email distribution list. Stewardship for 2020, uh, our current year, 2020. We are about uh, $60,000, actually, from where we need to be. So we would ask if you can be generous for this year. If you have not completed your pledge to please do so, if you possibly can, that would be great. We will have a message about stewardship from Rich Hiskus in just a moment. I have just two announcements. One is that over this last weekend, both on Friday and Saturday, we distributed Advent bags in the parking lot to people who came and picked those up. If you were unable to come and pick up an Advent bag but would like one, they contain some readings, prayers, meditations for the season of Advent, as well as some candles, please let us know, and we're happy to either deliver those things to you or send them by mail. We have bags for adults and some for kids as well, so just let us know. My other announcement is about our prayer fence along Division Avenue. We invite you and welcome you to come and leave your prayers tied to that fence. Parishioners should have received in the mail a little piece of cloth where they can write their prayer, but if you didn't receive one and would still like to participate, you can use any piece of cloth or really even just a ribbon to signify a prayer. We invite you to leave those anytime. Also for our Advent journey, uh, please see our Facebook page. Uh, Jeff Brown, our Director of Youth uh, Formation, will be offering several sessions uh, on Sunday afternoons on the Way of Love. This coming Wednesday, the Adult Formation team will be sponsoring um, our Wednesday series uh, for, for Advent. That information is also uh, uh, on Facebook as well as the Zoom link opportunities to grow 
into this beloved community about which we spend a lot of time talking about, but to which we are actually called. Now we have a message for stewardship by our parishioner, Rich Hiskus. I'm Rich Hiskus with some thoughts about why pledging matters to me. I'm missing you all not being in church, but I thought I'd say a few words about it. Um, some of you may know that I'm a retired human rights professor and scholar. And oftentimes when I'm talking with students or with other scholars, a question comes up that what is that's so special about humans? What's our special ingredient that gets us rights and no other species have rights? Since the 18th century, the, the answer has usually been rationality. The fact that human beings have reason qualifies us in a sort of involved argument for why we deserve rights. I've always thought it was a little different than that. In my opinion, what makes humans special is that we are the only species uh, that makes promises to each other. And that really, almost all human accomplishments that we do together depend on this capacity to make promises. Sometimes we call them contracts or vows or covenants. But all the things that we make together, whether it's hospitals or schools or churches or roads, depends upon us making promises to each other and keeping them. We are, I like to say, a very promising species. Some philosophers think of this attribution of the ability to promise to humans as some kind of arrogant uh, power grab, that we actually think we can control the future, so we make promises about it. But Christians don't think that way. As Christians, we are much more humble in that we know that when we make a promise, we need help in keeping it. We need God's help. Uh, and we have to have faith that God will provide the help that we can keep our promise so that when we get married, we get married before God for that very important vow. When we have a, a baptism ceremony at church, Christian will ask us as the congregation, will you support the candidate? And we always respond, I will with God's help. Our faith is that God will help us do this most human of things, which is to make a promise and be able to keep it. And speaking of God and promising, it always struck me, even as a child, how amazing it was that God makes promises too, to humans. Um, in the book of Genesis, it's full of God promising never to send a flood again, promising Abraham to have millions of descendants and sending them to the promised land, a whole land of promises. Uh, and he promises to send his son to redeem us all. And I always thought, why does God bother to promise to us? We're not remotely on the same level. And why would God bind himself by the promises he makes to us? And I think that the answer is to show us what a godly thing that is to make a promise. And so when I think of making a pledge, I think of making a promise to myself, to St. Mark's, to God, that, will give, that I will give something or do something for St. Mark's in the coming year. Um, and I know that I need help from God in, to keep that promise because who knows when the next pandemic is coming or the next recession or some other personal trial. So when you make a pledge this year, I'd like you to think that you should do it because it's the human thing to do. And furthermore, it's the closest we are ever likely to get to doing the godly thing. Thank you. God continues to give us many good and wonderful gifts. Today we are blessed with beautiful music from Greg and Riley and all participating here in the, in the uh, chancel of the church and certainly for you as well. Thank you for being with us. May God keep you safe from harm, give you health of mind, body, and spirit as we give back to God now a sign of our lives and our labors.
tellest good tidings to Zion. Let us praise God together. Praise, praise God. God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise, praise God, God, all creatures here below. Praise, praise God, God, above ye, heavenly host. Praise, praise Father, God, Son, and Holy God. Ghost. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks, thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks, because when Jesus humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. So now we watch for the day, knowing that the salvation promised us will be ours when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you as we pray, holy holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your spirit that on this broken bread and wine outpoured, may it be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember that all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. God of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Mark and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, whose table was open to all, is now present in this bread and in this wine. He whose word welcomed friend and stranger offers himself to us. Therefore we pray. O oh, Jesus, Believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our hearts. Through which we fast from receiving you in these elements of the Eucharist at this time. And until we gather again as a community, come spiritually into our hearts. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. 
now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may claim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of the God who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us, bless us now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve God and all God's people. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.